Welcome, Gun Runner. Hey everybody, Kieran AK, the Retro Nerd here, and um, here's the video that I've all been promising you for a few weeks now. It's the um, final review video of the C64 Mini. My backer model has uh, finally arrived, well I say finally, it's actually arrived really early so it's not finally, but it seems like it's been um, uh, a long wait for it in anticipation. So I was lucky enough to see some early, early models of it, but my own... Um, production model is finally here so we can take a proper look at it now I'm not going to do an unboxing because I'm not a fan of unboxing videos I hate them in fact but I will briefly show you what what is in the box because I think it, it's worth seeing and it's worth seeing kind of the quality so you get an outside sleeve um, like this I'm going to try, try and find a, a better way of showing you let's move that TV out of the way this is room in my kitchen so let's move that up um, so this is the, uh, the outer box, um, all very cool, um, let's have a look at the back, there we go, so it shows all the games on the back, 64 classic games included, because of course it's the Commodore 64, so it makes sense to have 64 games. So obviously we get the, um, the Mini itself is inside, let's put that up there for a minute. So inside you actually get um, a... Uh, an inner box, um, which is awesome. Um, flap top. So, and then inside there, I'll just quickly show you. Everything is is all packed in. So, um, really, really good packaging. And uh, somewhere in here, there's a manual as well. So let's grab that out. So I can show you that quickly. But yeah, I was amazingly impressed um, by how high quality the packaging was here. I mean, it really is. Um, top notch um they didn't really ex spare any expense when it came to the actual packaging of the of, of the thing so we've got a quick guide here you can see um let's turn the camera off a minute so yeah that's in all, all languages so there we go shows you how it all works it shows you what what ports we've got etc etc i'm going to show you all of that in a minute anyway so Let's put that down. So let's have a look what we've got. So let's go and have a look at this this one first. So this is the actual um, mini itself. So I, I showed this in a previous video, but a lot of people seem very hung up on the issue with the keys not working. So I mean, they don't work at all. They look like they do, but they don't. Now, obviously, this is the plug and play mini version. There is a bigger version planned. It doesn't seem to matter how many times I've said this, people don't listen. There is already a prototype of the full-size version, which does have working keys. This is the, the simple plug-and-play version. If you want the serious sort of recreated Commodore 64, then you want the bigger version with the working keys. So you've got the choice either or. People have sort of tried to be a bit pedantic and say, why can't I have both? Does that really look like a keyboard you could use? Bear in mind... Um, I'm an adult male. I've, I've got fairly small hands for, for, for a man, um, you know, and look at my fingers. Look how massive they are on those keys. You could never sensibly use that as a keyboard. Never. <coughs> Possibly if it was like a touchscreen phone keyboard, but that or, or, or changed it to a, to a different style of keys. But as that is, that would be extremely difficult to use practically as a keyboard. You can plug a keyboard in if you wish anyway. So if you do really wish to use a keyboard with it, just plug the keyboard in. And that's because we have this on the side. We have USB sockets. So there's our, our, um, our, our button there on a button and two USB sockets. Two might not seem like a lot, but you can plug in a USB hub as long as it's a powered USB hub. So you can therefore connect plenty more. We've got our HDMI socket, we've got a power in. You can power it off USB. Um, but of course, you could um, use like a, a phone charger as well, one of the USB star ones. I've got loads of those kicking around, so it's not a problem. A nice shiny silver label on the bottom. Um, it's a decent weight. It's not really light like you'd expect. So um, it's 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 not really heavy. It's but it feels nice. It feels like it's a good weight, if you know what I mean. I've got the power light. You know all the usual keys. The only thing is, a couple of keys have been adapted slightly like that. Just says the C64 on it, as you can probably see. Um, 
rather than anything else. So there's there's that. What else do we got? So you get some cables with it, as you'd expect. Um, so you've got your um, HDMI cable, nice nice length HDMI cable as well. I should mention. You can always see that's a good length. And one of the biggest problems with these plug and play devices is that the cables you get are ridiculously short. Um, NES Mini, I'm looking at you, um, and this isn't. I mean, this is the power cable as well. And look, that is really long as well. So we've got a good one meter cable there um, for plugging it in for the power. And actually the same again with the, the joystick itself. So we've got a really long, like one meter cable with the joystick as well. So now we've got the joystick. So modeled on a Competition Pro, as you can see um, with the logo. Now um, there's the bottom, so it's got little grip, little rubber grips on the bottom as well. It's not micro switched. I have said this in a previous video but there is going to be a micro switched version. But to me, one thing I would say is, this is one of my big reservations. I hated the Competition Pro joystick when I was uh, a spec owner back in the day. I never liked it. I never understood why my best mate, Neil Smith, liked it so much, because I always thought it was horrible. I had a Cheetah 125 Plus, which I loved, and I went through a few of them, because I broke one playing Daily Thompson's Decathlon, like many of us did. Um, but this joystick, so we've got plenty of movement. It's nowhere near as stiff as the usual competition pros. Um, and the one thing we should mention is, again, going back to the, the keyboard issue is, you can see you've got two fire buttons here and here, a button here and here, and four buttons along the face. One of which is the menu button, obviously it's signified here on the end. Now, all of these buttons, apart from your menu button, can actually be defined. So actually these can be defined as separate buttons. These can be defined as separate buttons. These can all be defined as separate buttons. So if you've got keyboard functions, so for example, say you've got, let's say it's commando and space bar, you need to throw grenades. Well, okay then, one of those buttons fire, one of those buttons grenades. Problem sorted. I mean, on the device, you've got games that, that practically use that. For, uh, one of the best examples is you've got school days on there. So school days needed buttons on the keyboard because you had different actions like jump, punch, pick up, things like that. They've all been defined to these keys. So you don't need the keyboard, because a lot of people have gone, oh, that you need the keyboard to play certain games. You don't really. The only one game on here where you find that it's, it's I think they, one reason why, why they put that on there, is Temple of Apsi, um, the classic Epics RPG, where there is stuff you need to type in, and an on-screen keyboard does pop, it, pop up, so you can do that. I did actually show that in my previous video, actually. So there is that if you do need to do stuff like that. And you can negotiate the, the pop-up keyboard pretty damn quickly, so it's quite easy to use. And then, again, you can do, assign these to certain functions within the game if you want to anyway. So that's what you get in it. Um, I didn't want to spend ages going, going over it, but I did want to show you exactly what you got in the box. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this all hooked up on um, my little flat screen TV and show you how it all works. So here we are in the game selection screen. So I showed this in one of my previous on my previous videos, but I'll just kind of give you an idea. So you can look at the games. Basic there. So you can, as I said before, go to basic and type in stuff in basic. You can also use that to load your games from uh, memory stick as well, your D64 files. You can load them in like you would load games on a normal um, C64. So loads of classics on here. I mean, look, Bounder, California Games, Chips Challenge, Boulder Dash, right there, you know, all absolute bona fide classics. Creatures, probably one of the most highly acclaimed games on the Commodore 64. Houston Classics, Cybernoid, Cybernoid 1 and 2, some Gremlin stuff like Deflector, Gribbly's Day Out, Thalamus stuff like Hawkeye, Classic Highway Encounter, but Hunter's Moon, Another um, Epics Classic, Impossible Mission, Impossible Mission 2, um, IO, Highly Acclaimed Shooter, we've got Jumpman, we've got Mega Apocalypse with its awesome soundtrack, Wanted Monty Mole, Monty on the Run, Nebulous, Nobby the Aardvark, so much Paradroid, which got voted the best C64 game ever um, in Retro Gamer, so that's on there, Rana Rama. School Days, of course, which I've already talked about. Probably one of my favourite games ever. 
Speedball and Speedball 2, absolute classics. Spin Dizzy, Star Paws, Street Sports Baseball, Summer Games 2, Super Cycle, so I mean just absolute loads of stuff. That's the Hall of Fame. So back to the beginning again really with their thing bounces back. I know we're not at the beginning, get Trailblazer, Iridium, Winter Game Sound, World Game Zynaps, Alley Cat, we're back to the beginning again with Armour Light, etc. So I've shown a few of these other things. Um, we've shown you lots of games in the previous video. So Hall of Fame. So there we go. If you backed the Commodore 64, then there you are in the Hall of Fame with that lovely Sid music playing. So there we go. I can bring up the menu where I can um, bring up... I'll show you Virtual Keyboard. Okay, actually, so there you go. There's the Virtual Keyboard if you want to use that. This pops up on the side of the screen. We'll go out of that. Exit game. So what else we got in here? I'll show you basic quickly. I'll show you when we boot into basic. So there we go, 64 basic. So we can boot into that like you would on a on a real corner 64 really there. And if you had a keyboard you can type in, or obviously you can bring up the virtual keyboard and um type away um, pretty pretty easy to use exit game there we go so let's show you some more things so I talked about display options in one of the previous videos this is what we've got so we've got pixel perfect European 4.3 North American 4.3 for NTSC pixel perfect CRT CRT emulation I'll show you that in a minute European 4.3 CRT and North American 4.3 CRT so let's go into European 4.3 CRT. That's what um, a lot of um, people will be used to. So we've now set that. So now when we go into a game, we should be able to see that reflected. So let's go to Zynapse. And now you should be able to see the scan lines. Um, and it comes out really nice, you can probably see. So now you can actually see the. That was good. It tells me to actually try and not look through the view, viewfinder while I'm doing this. Just to give you an idea of what the, um, the CRT emulation looks like. Um, it's really good quality. Zynapse is the game I hadn't shown on any of the previous videos as well, so it's, um, it's quite a popular title. So, yeah, I thought. Right. So that's that. We can try another option on there if you want to see a different screen mode. So let's try, um, let's go to Pixel Perfect CRT then. So you can get a look at a couple of different screen modes and we'll put on something uh, different. So let's do Who Dares Wins 2. That's a game I haven't shown um, either yet. So. So this one you can probably see it quite clearly because there's a lot of background graphics so you can actually see yeah there's some grenades at him get killed so there we have your um, CRT emulation so let's go back so what else we've got down here? So that's your TV modes. That's your language options. So you can choose different languages. So English, Spanish, Italian, German and French. So we don't need to mess with that at all. And your tools menu. So you've got your USB keyboard. So you can, again, because different countries use different styles of keyboard, you can tell it what type of keyboard you're using. Let's go back out there. Legal notices, obviously all your copyrights and stuff like that, because um, worth mentioning, I've mentioned it many, many times, but everything about this device is official. So the C64 is all officially licensed, you can see here from Coanto, who are the cu current owners of it. All the firmware was done by Chris Smith. Um, all the games were licensed there by Darren Melbourne. 
and um, it's got um, the respective um, IPs recognised and who owns them. Every single game was licensed officially. Um, so, you know, you, you're getting a 100% official device here. System information. So therefore, if you needed to um, do your firmware updates, etc., etc., which will be coming in the future, because obviously there'll be things like a shop for downloading games and things like that. There'll be various updates done. If you did want to factory reset the device, um, you can do that. Though there's no need to do that. And um, there we have it. Um, that's basically everything on there. We can turn the music on and off with one of the buttons on there. So you can see there that it. it um, tells you that it's off and on and that is everything really so let's let's give you some thoughts on this so many of you will know I'm not a big fan of the Commodore 64 I owned a Spectrum growing up so I was very much a Spectrum guy so you know the Commodore 64 guys were my enemies so to speak at school like my friend good friend Alex I turned that down a bit and got the music on the chips challenge is very loud indeed so another game worth looking at let's turn that down a little bit more because it's very loud on that on that game while I give you my thoughts so yes I wasn't a um, as I said I wasn't uh, any by any means a um, a Commodore 64 fan growing up um, and um, not so much as an adult either because I mean although the Spectrum was the computer I grew up with my my big love later on became Atari as most people know which is why my channel is obviously quite Atari focused and um, you know if I had to pick my favorite 8-bit computer then these days despite the fact I grew up with the Spectrum it would very much be the Atari 8-bit because I think it's an absolutely wonderful machine but that's not to say that you know um, I don't appreciate other systems, which I do. And anyone who you know who knows me and uh, you know has chatted with me at, at various retro events, or even you know watched my channel, you know to be honest, will you know know that I'm a a big fan of retro stuff in general. And, you know, and I've written about the the Commodore 64 and other systems before um, in Retro Gamer. So you know, I'm I'm certainly not unfamiliar with the, the 64 at all. Um, and um, you know, I'm really, really impressed with this um, device. There's lots and lots of positives about it. Um, I think the range of options um, that we've got here is excellent in terms of choosing the different screen modes. The game selection, I think, is really, really good. A lot of people have actually criticised the game's collection, which, which I think is rather unfair because you know we've had people saying, "Why hasn't it got this game? Why hasn't it got that game?" You know, well, they could have put every game on here. You know, um, that that just wouldn't have been possible. They chose 64 games. I think the game selection is excellent. You've got a really wide mix of genres. Um, so, you know, just about every kind of game you can think of is catered for on here. And um, you know, as, as I was reading out at the beginning, you know, there's so many classic games on here. You know, that anyone who says that it hasn't got the classics or hasn't got the, the best games on it, you know. It, that's all a subjective thing at the end of the day and there's lots of games on here that I enjoy playing I mean one of them right now Chips Challenge which I absolutely love mainly from my my you know owning a Lynx so you know you know I, I would quite happily sit down and play a, a very large selection of the games on this device and at the end of the day as I've pointed out before you know so what if, you, if, if, you, if it hasn't got your favourite games on here there's nothing to stop you just downloading them, sticking on a memory stick and loading them. I mean, it's even, you know, a lot of people get put off by that, going, oh, but I don't know how to do technical stuff. You don't need to know how to do technical stuff. You know, it is a, literally a case of shoving some ROMs on a memory stick and plugging them into the side of the device. I mean, it's it's really not difficult. I think pretty much anybody could, um, could, could, could do that. It's certainly very, very user-friendly in... In pretty much every regard and I don't think anyone would struggle to um, get things running on it at all um, it doesn't take up much space is another big positive obviously of it um, so that that that's a good thing and um, 
you get everything in the box that you need. So the fact that you've got the, the lo nice long cables as well is a big plus, so you can move it quite far away from the television. Um, the, uh, you get the joystick, that's got a long lead as well, so again, you can stretch that out. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, there is some negatives. I'll go through my, my, my negatives and personal ones. Is, I already mentioned one, I do not like this joystick. I don't like competition pros. I find that using this after a while does start to ache my hand a little bit because I, I've, I've never been a massive fan of this joystick. So it would be good if, if in the future they do come up with um, some alternative control options. I'm sure they will. It'd be great if they could come up with a joypad that could be used because these days I do much prefer joypads. And I'm sure if Retro Games don't come up with one, I'm sure in no time there'll be someone who's created a, a device, you know, a, a driver or a USB device where you can use you know a playstation joypad or xbox controller or some such with it that that will obviously be coming I, I don't i think it's probably only a matter of time before someone comes up with that so that's a, a you know that's 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 a negative for me is because I, i'm not a massive fan of the joystick um but that that's really the um the only negative i can really come up with i can't see um many other negatives for me with this device you can maybe complain that it hasn't got enough usb sockets i think possibly it could have done with four i think they put two on one side they probably could have put two on the other side as well um to have given it four that might have been better rather than having to plug in a usb hub because obviously once you've got the joystick plugged in you've only actually got one usb socket free so that kind of um gets full pretty quickly but that's you know that that that's it really overall this is a really nice device and uh i can't see to be honest why why anybody wouldn't um enjoy playing with it i mean everything has just been done so so well if you compare it to something like spectrum vega um which of course many of the same so some of the same team behind this were behind the original spectrum vega uh chris smith and paul andrews most notably you can see they learned a lot um in the terms of, in the way they did things and this is almost like kind of makes you wonder what, what would have become if they'd have stayed with the Spectrum Vega team and, and seen the second model through, because I think we would have seen something with a much higher quality um, like this, with, you know, with, with everything fixed the way it is on this. It's, it's, a, you know, it's, it's such a, a high quality device, and I think for the price, you're getting quite a lot for your money as well, and, and obviously the potential to load games, um, extra games from it straight out of the box and stuff without having to hack anything, like the NES Mini, is obviously a big bonus as well. So, yeah. If you didn't back this, then, then, uh, and you maybe were wondering, thinking, mm, I'll wait till it comes out in retail. Then, you know, I, I, I can't help but recommend this purchase, and that's coming from someone who doesn't like the C64. You know, so, you know, if you're a fan of of the C64, if you're a fan of retro games in general, really, then um, th this is definitely something worth getting. You can pick them up on Amazon. You can buy them now from Argos, so they're they're, they're really easy to get your hands on, and and that's the the lot really. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed um, my review of the C64 Mini. Um, great little device. And I will see you all again for another video very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.